Hi there, YouTube. It has been suggested many times over the past four or five years that I should start making videos again. Um, as you can probably see, I have gotten quite a bit older to look at. An old fart. Um, and I need those to see what's going on on the screen. But anyways, um, this is four and a half weeks into my self-quarantine because of the coronavirus. And I am beginning, even though I'm an introvert, to be bored out of my fucking skull. And someone suggested I should tell some stories from my past, especially from the five years I was a cab driver. So if you want to hear more stories than the one I'm going to tell now, let me know in the comments. I was a cab driver first I was a bus driver for a few years and uh, that qualified me to also drive a cab. Um, here the rules are that you have to get a special driver's license of course to drive a bus and you get what is called a commercial driver's license which also gives you permission to drive a taxi, a cab. So when I got bored being a bus driver, I wanted to try something completely different, clean hands. Um, and I found a, a dude who hired me to be a cab driver. Him and his wife had a quite a big cab company with, I think it was 15 taxis at the time. And this, this was back in uh, 19... 84 it must have been or 1983 no uh, 1983 uh, in the beginning of 1983 and um, I went to talk with him and uh, he hired me so uh, over the course of almost five years I drove taxi during the nights mostly and experienced quite a lot of shit I was 24, 23 years old, uh, very inexperienced human being <laughs> compared to today, of course, when I'm now 61, god damn it. Oh well, one of the more wild stories was that one night about 2 a.m. I've been driving around for about six hours at the time and I was getting hungry. So uh, I went down to a, a small street out in Österbro, Easter Bridge uh, in Copenhagen. And uh, on this street, there was one of the very few 24-7 uh, open uh, places where you could get something to eat. And I went down there, it was uh, down half a half a floor into a basement kind of thing and got myself a very big burger. Uh, nothing like the burgers we get today. It was not bad for the time, but it was not a very good burger. But I was hungry. So I went down there and got my burger and came up to the street and looked at my cab. And then I realized I had forgotten to locked the doors and in the passenger seat there was a uh, this guy sitting and I was thinking oh fuck now I can't just get in my cab and find a place to park and just eat my burger and drink my coffee in peace I have to drive this fucking dude somewhere first so I get into the cab and I look at him and uh, I ask him where you're going and he gives an address not very far from where I where this uh, burger joint was and I had to make a U-turn and as I was doing this U-turn 
I uh, I saw that he was quite drunk, to put it mildly. He was like when I did the U-turn, I I did it a little harsh because I was kind of angry that he got into my car without asking permission first. So his his head bumped into the to the window on the side of the car and and uh, he said something like uh, I am so sorry and I looked at him and thought what the fuck are you sorry about getting into my cab or what but I didn't say anything I didn't want to you know aggravate the man um, so uh, I was driving out to this address that he has given me is kind of a uh, not a rich man's neighborhood, but not a poor one either, uh, where there was these uh, kind of bungalow type houses, which was very fancy and smart back in the 30s. It's uh, Today, it's a quite an expensive neighborhood. And as I was driving him out there, it took about maybe 10 minutes to get out there. He was uh, mumbling shit like i didn't do it i didn't do it it's not my fault and, and things like that in his very drunken slurry voice and um, when we reached the address i uh, he paid me no problem there and tipped me pretty well also and he stumbled out of the cab and fell on the sidewalk and got up dusted himself off and sort of hobbled over on the other side of the, the small street there and went into a garden and I was watching him as he was walking up to the house and unlocking the door, which he left open and he went into the house, but he didn't put on the lights. The, the house was totally dark. And uh, I started wondering what the fuck was it that he said that he hadn't done and what was all that about was he just a crazy person or was there something else going on here and i don't know why i did it because it was really fucking stupid to do that but then again i was like 24 years old so i got out of the cab and i walked into this garden and up the stairs uh, to the house and i went in and it was totally dark inside except for i could see that the street lights were shining in through one of the windows and I could see that he was in the far end of the house all the way in the back I could sort of see him rummaging around in there and uh, I walked in there was this very narrow kind of hallway thing and I got to the living room and stopped I could see from the very faint light in there on the living room floor there was somebody lying there with a big knife sticking out of their chest and then I realized that the shiny dark thing on the floor very shiny very big dark almost black thing on the floor that it was like covering the floor was blood at that moment, I just, I don't know what I did. I, I remember just uh, freezing on the spot and then turning around and running like fucking hell into my cab, locking the doors and driving about 50 meters up the street and parking there. And I felt my heart was just racing like crazy. And... I felt like I was going to faint, but what I did was I called the the central, uh, the radio central, and called what we did back then was called an alarm, and I told her that she needed to call the police and she needed to do it now because I have been wit witnessing, uh, not witnessing directly, but I, that there was a murder going on. Uh, there was a dead person with a big knife in the chest. And I sat in the cab and waited for maybe two, three minutes. And the first cop car with the blue lights uh, blinking all over the place came racing around the corner and just went right through the big bush and, in, and parked in the middle of the garden. 
and then another police car right after that with no blinking lights on it, a civil uh, unmarked car, and then another one, and then about six or seven minutes later, an ambulance also came. And I was just sitting there, you know, watching this whole display going on, smoking a cigarette or two. I still smoked at the time. And I was in shock. Uh, my burger was still uh, up in the, in the front over the dashboard in the car. I hadn't eaten that and probably ice cold by the time. And then uh, one of the cops saw me and uh, beckoned me to come out of the cab and I walked over to him and they interviewed me there right there in, in, in the garden while they hauled this dude out in handcuffs and dumped him into a police car and then they uh, got the dead person out in a body bag also walking right past me there and I had to after this very short interview in the garden, they asked if I wanted to come into the police station and give a statement. And I said, sure, not a problem. Uh, I went to the, I drove to the police station that they asked me to do. And they interviewed me for like three hours to get all the details uh, while it was still fresh in my memory. And after that, I just got into my taxi and went to the parking lot where we used to park the cabs and I just put it there and I went home. And I remember that every time I closed my eyes, I could just see that body on the floor with the knife in it. Um, and I just didn't, I just couldn't sleep. So yeah, that was one of my cab stories. They actually paid me uh, paid me for lost uh, income, the police. Uh, they got they gave me 500 kroner, which at that time was just about uh, a little more than a day's pay uh, after taxes. And it was tax-free, so yeah, I got that out of it. I had to call in sick for a couple of days until my system was not in shock anymore. Yeah, that's one of the things that uh, can happen when you're a fucking cab driver. Yeah, so uh, let me know if you want to hear more cab stories. I got a few couple more, maybe even some wilder than this one. Peace and don't panic. <laughs>